Hi, welcome to SFG Cards and Craft. Today I'm going to show you how I managed to do this really cute Stampendous Winter Birds stamp set uh, using the Distress Inks. This is the actual stamp I'm just showing there on the screen. Um, the inks that I was using, oh, it's called Winter Birds by the way, the inks I was using is Distress Inks, Rusty Hinge, Brush Corduroy and Gathered Twig for the browns. Then I used Candy Apple, Lucky Clover, which is the green, and the Mary, uh, dried marigold, which is uh, just a tiny little bit of that. These are black and white glaze pens, uh, Sakura glaze pens. I use uh, those on it. Oh, you don't actually see me use the black one, but I do use it. That was VersaFine Black Onyx. Uh, this is actually the Mama Elephant's So Fancy Creative Cuts. I only use the, the very large one on the outside, which is my standard one that I use for all of my cards. And there's the card already stamped with the Black Onyx, and I've got the clear, super fine um, uh, Ranger's clear embossing powder, the super fine version of it, on there. Okay, now what I'm doing here, I'm just grabbing a number four round brush and wetting it. Just dampening it actually, uh, not, not too much water on this one. Just a little bit of water, I'll wipe some of it off. Uh, getting the tail feathers just sort of dampened with the clean water. And then I come in with the rusty hinge, which is the, the main colour on this one. Just, I don't know why I'm pausing for there, I'm probably checking the monitor, I'm sorry. The camera. Yes, I was deciding to bring it in a little bit. Um, so the, I'm just putting the, the um, rusty hinge on as the base colour, just coating it all over, just basically blocking it in. And then I'm just dotting on some brushed corduroy just to sort of darken the tips of the feathers. It sort of oozes up the feather into uh, the uh, rusty hinge and sort of blends the two together a little bit. you notice it later on once it's dry, you can see how it's sort of blended in. Then I come back in with some more clear water to dampen the uh, wing. This card that I did is actually, I've, I've done three of them now. Uh, well, first, the first one I did was actually a total disaster, so that one ended up in the big round filing cabinet. Um, but the, the three that I've done, which I do show here, that well, you would have seen them at the beginning of this video as well, but they're showing at the end as, as well. Um, they are very quick to do. I was surprised actually because it looks fairly involved, but it's not really. It's, it's quite a fast one for me to do. Um, okay, here I'm just coming back in after the blocking in with the rusty hinges, going back in with the brushed corduroy just to darken the tips of the wings. Uh, sorry, the tips of the feathers on the wing again. Yeah, when I saw the stamp set on the um, in the shop, as, well actually it was an online store that I bought it from, I thought oh what a great little stamp set so I had to buy it, it was only like about $10 or something, can't remember, um, but I thought well a great little stamp set and I thought that's really lovely for Christmas so I decided I'd buy it and I'm really pleased I did. Uh, when I first tried it and I thought oh that looks horrible, what am I going to do with it because I hadn't actually used the embossing powder. Okay, now here what I've done is I've just gone around the outside there with rusty hinge. I could have filled in the whole thing, but it didn't really matter. And I've come in with uh, just dotting in some of the candied apple, uh, just just to give it like a like a little robin redbreast type sort of a, a bird. I don't have no idea what the robin redbreasts look like, but I'm assuming that it's like a sparrow with a red breast. I don't know, but you know, I mean, I could have probably done the bird. I had thought about doing a blue bird, but uh, I thought, well, this is. You know, okay, it's Christmassy and they got hats and scarves on, but you know, which is really sort of not. It's a sort of fanciful sort of a card anyway. It's not really a realistic type thing with, when they're wearing hats and scarves. But you know, I think if I can do the bird, that looks reasonably realistic. Um, just putting the uh, this is rusty hinge again going onto the face. I, I think I got a little bit onto the beak there. That's why I actually blotted it off because it was the uh, brown was going onto the beak and I didn't want it to. Um, little red bit for the cheek, that's the candied apple again. Just dotting it into the cheek, letting it sort of spread out naturally with the uh, moisture on the paper. Um, just touching up down below there, once it's a little bit dry, I'm sort of uh, making sure that there's no white spots showing through where there shouldn't be, just sort of adding a bit more of the uh, rusty hinge over the uh, any of the white spots. Uh, yeah, I must have got some more onto the beak, I'm just wiping it off there. Um, 
going into the second bird now, doing pretty much the same thing, although there is no actual wing or tail feathers showing there, so it's just really the body and the head on this one. Doing the same thing again, just dampening the whole area that I'm working on, uh, going in then with the rusty hinge and blocking that all in, and then I'll touch it with the uh, candied apple again just to get that little red breast again. I've got some more onto the little uh, pom-pom that's on the bird's hat there just trying to get it off because I, I want those to remain white I don't want those to have colour on them <laughs> and again <laughs> you'd think that with the embossing powder there that I'd be able to get away with doing that but unfortunately I didn't and there's the candy apple going on now because this bird's sort of sitting sideways the candy apple has to go underneath its little hat area as well under the pom-pom there a little bit so that's more central onto its body even though it appears to be off to one side it's it's probably because it's, it's just sitting there the way it's sitting it's more central on its body that way um, just sort of getting rid of a little bit that sort of seemed to have spread out a little bit far there uh, just dampening the face to get it ready again for the rusty hinge to go on This is actually my first Christmas cards that I've done this year. I know it's a little early for to th be thinking about Christmas, but uh, Christmassy things have already been out in the shops for over a month here in Australia already, and I don't know why they do that. Beginning of August, you know, as soon as you get past Queen's Birthday weekend, which is in July here, um, they um, start bringing out the uh, Christmas stuff in August, so or end of August. So we've already had nearly a month of stuff in the shops and. By the beginning of November they start playing Christmas music and I thought, gee, you know. But then you know sooner over Christmas and they bring out all the Easter things. I suppose that's where they are, they're there to make money, aren't they? Uh, okay, now I'm coming in with the angle shader, just bringing in a little bit of, this is gathered, no sorry, this is brushed corduroy. Uh, just bringing in a little bit of shading under the wings and in, into the areas that are requiring a bit of shading. Um, on the bottoms, which is just above where the branches, sort of un under their bellies, I actually do the gathered twigs. That's the only place there and on the thick part of the branch where I actually do the gathered twigs. The rest of it's just uh, the rusty hinges, sorry, rusty hinge or brushed corduroy. I didn't think I needed to speed this up because it's fairly fast doing it anyway. I do speed up when I'm doing the hats and scarf and also the uh, snow area on the branch because that's just fairly straightforward. There's, there's nothing fancy about that. It's, there's no rocket science in that. So I decided that I'd leave the whole uh, normal speed in of this one so you can see how, how quick it is to do it. So it's only been running about seven, not even quite eight minutes yet. And I'm already nearly finished the birds. So it is a very fast one. This is something that you could even mass produce if you wanted to, I suppose, because of how fast it is. If you had some kids, they could probably help you with the hats and the scarf and, the, and putting the snow on, uh, if you could trust them to do that, of course. <laughs> and you just do the painting on the birds, make mass produce family made cards. It would be quite nice. Um, just coming in there, this is uh, the brushed corduroy, just doing some shading under the hat area and under the chin of the birds just to bring out a little bit of the colouring on it I suppose because the, the faces looked a bit pale prior to that but as it was it was only just an undercoat anyway like a blocking in of the um, rusty hinge initially so just a bit more shading on the, this one and then the birds will actually be finished and then I've just got to do the hats and the scarves sorry hats and scarf oh and the beaks sorry the beaks I do with dried marigold I think I think I actually do two coats of that but I may only be showing one on screen because the dried marigold is quite a pale colour not like the, the, um, it's the pumpkin one, what's the pumpkin one, I can't remember the name of it um, the marigold's quite a sort of a soft sort of delicate colour so I, th I think I actually did put two coats on that but I, I don't remember showing it on the screen okay that's the birds pretty much done I'm coming in with, for the branch now because the branch is done with the same two colours uh, the rusty hinge is the basic colour I'm just changing brushes here I realised the small brush I had was just a bit too small um, bring in for a number four brush here just that's the rusty hinge going on uh, I do uh, darken it with the brushed corduroy here and there 
I don't think I actually used a gathered twig on that. It was just the pretty sure the gathered twig was only used on the uh, underside of the belly on the birds. It didn't really seem to need it anywhere else. I didn't think anyway. <coughs> I had thought about possibly putting some little um, snowflakes. I've got a, a stamp set that's got little tiny snowflakes in it. Um, but I thought, well, no, it probably doesn't really need that. So I, I thought, no, I'll just leave it like it is, like a winter sort of a sort of a look. And I, I thought it looked quite nice. Just bringing this. There's the uh, brushed corduroy now. Just bringing in a little bit just to shade the bottom of the branch. There's there's not much branch showing anyway. It's um, it's all pretty much covered with the snow. I wasn't quite happy with the way the um, rusty hinge and the uh, candy apple actually uh, blended in together there, so I um, uh, just had to touch it up a little bit. Okay, just touching up a little bit here around their faces, just sort of finishing touches sort of thing. Uh, next thing I actually start on is the hats. I um, do the hats in the uh, candied apple for the red and the lucky clover for the green. Those two are the brightest of the red and greens that I have in the distress inks. I'm not sure if there is any others uh, brighter than these, but I ended up putting two coats of each on. Um, there's no specific shading or highlighting on these. It's, I've just put it on flat and I think that doesn't really need anything more than that. Um, I've, I've left stripes here on this, this part of the hat and on the other part I thought I'd do white and green stripes on this one and white and red stripes on the other one um, just just because no particular reason just because I could <laughs> and just finishing off the green then I come in with the red and then I'll do a second coat of each as I said this is not rocket science this is just um, flat painted in nothing special um, and two coats. That's all I've done. Just to, just to brighten the colours up a little bit. Because that's the reason I've done the two coats. And the reason I've speeded it up because, as I said, there's nothing really special about it. Okay, here I'm coming in with a second coat now. It's a fairly small area, but just that little bit of colour actually does sort of brighten the card up. Makes it very Christmassy. And the glaze pen. This is a Secura white glaze pen. Um, when I first got this pen, oh, probably two to three months ago now, I rang up the place where I bought it from because it was I bought it from a shop that's in Queensland, and I'm, I live in uh, now in New South Wales, sort of near, in Sydney area. And I thought there was a problem with it. I, th I thought the pen was faulty because it was when I used it, it came through very milky looking, almost like water mixed with a whole lot of, or really a little bit of milk mixed in with a whole lot of water. It was just off clear and that's all. And I thought there's a problem with it. And then I realised afterwards, she, when I spoke to the lady, she said, no, mine's like that too. She said, they're all like that. Uh, she, she thought the same thing too when she'd used her one. And But when they dry, it takes about 15 minutes to dry, they actually dry quite white and sort of glossy white. So there's nothing wrong with the pen, that's just the way they are. But the black one, the black one goes on jet black and dries in a matter of seconds. But this one takes like about 15 minutes. For this area that I've got, I would have liked to have put it aside for about half an hour before touching it, which I, I did actually. I, I didn't actually touch it for about half an hour to let it dry thoroughly because I'm putting it on fairly thick. In fact, there was places where I went back off, off screen and I touched it up again. Okay, there's the, you can see how thick it is on there. It's like almost like paint. But uh, that actually comes up quite white after it's dry. I thought, well, that, that's the, basically the panel finished. Um, and then I will put it onto the cards and come back and show you what they look like. Okay, well, there's the finished cards. Now, I have done three of them. This is the one I actually just worked on here now, the one with the red. And I've put inside, and a Happy New Year. So it's got Merry Christmas on the outside and a Happy New Year inside. Uh, that was the green one. That was the first one I did. And earlier today, because I couldn't remember the colours I was using, I did that one. Um, and I put that one on the uh, brown cardstock, sort of a, a non-traditional Christmas colours. And this is the uh, 
the stamp that I used for the Merry Christmas and the Happy New Year inside, which is actually a lawn fawn stamp uh, that I had for about a year now. Okay, well that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching and if you like this would you subscribe please and uh, send me a message if you want to know anything else. Thank you. Bye.